What do you say about blinging today? Thank you for joining me as we complete two projects. We're going to work on two different bling shirts. Uh, we're going to do one t-shirt, which consists of three colors and one single color shirt. So stay tuned as we bling some things. <laughs> are going to bling two shirts today so let me show you um, one of the designs is going to be a simple one color design which I'll show you here in a moment how you can make this more than one color if you want to but this is a basic one color design is how we're going to do this today all right super cute and our second design is actually a three color design so here's one color which nine times out of ten this all will be silver um, this will be uh, green and the other template will be gold I haven't cut the other template out yet um, and it's the lower half of these letters as you see here um, this is the fill in for the blank letters here and down here so I have to cut the lower half of the letters. Um, so I saved that for right now to show you uh, what I was talking about earlier in my Facebook Live video. For those who saw that, who those of you who did not, um, one of the points I want to bring out with cutting out a template, which I wish somebody had told me this when I first started. Um, it's simple. Here is your flock, okay? And it can be black. Silhouette sells a black flock. This is orange. The rhinestone world sells blue. Doesn't matter. The color isn't the point. It's a nice soft texture. Kind of like suede is what it puts you in the mind of. And it's excellent for brushing stones into the template holes, which we'll go over that here in a moment. But the way to get this set up for Cricut or for Silhouette or for the scanning cut um, as far as putting the template onto your mat doesn't change, all right? So what we'll do is we'll cut this flock side up, okay? So you want to feel this when it's on the mat. But on the back is a uh, sheet that you want to peel off, all right? Because we want to expose the adhesive on the back side of this, all right? So that's taken off, and as you see, it's not super sticky, but it's sticky enough, okay? And what that will do is adhere this to our mat, all right? And then I just smooth it on. You don't have to put a whole lot of pressure to it unless your mat is super used and super beat up. If that's the case, then, you know, you want to rub it in really good. But if it's a fairly new mat or not so beat up, then you can just smooth it on just briefly. And I'm going to go ahead and take this over to the Cricut and come right back so that we can start blinging while this is cutting out. All right. Now that I sent that to the Cricut machine, I want to show you um, another tip that I would like to give to you guys. And forgive my dog who is being awfully verbal right now. Um, but... What I like to suggest to those who bling or who do vinyl on their shirts, press your shirt first. So put this on the heat press. I press my stones at 350, uh, 350 degrees for about 12 seconds. Why would I say press it first? Well, this is straight from the factory. I did not wash it or anything, but it could have moisture trapped in this shirt, all right? Just slight moisture that you or I wouldn't be able to detect. So what happens is if you go ahead and stone the shirt or put vinyl on this shirt without pressing the moisture out of it first, well, what could happen is the moisture can get under the glue of the vinyl or the stones and eventually lift, okay? So uh, on down the road, when you see people who have vinyl shirts or bling shirts and their bling is coming off or the vinyl is peeling, it's bubbling up under the vinyl, that's probably why. In most instances, that's why. Because there, there's moisture under the, the fibers of the shirt and it doesn't allow the glue to adhere properly. So I suggest press the shirt first. Okay, so that's first and foremost. So I've already done that. 
This shirt has been pre-pressed, so I'm going to set this all to the side. And what we'll do is go ahead and start with our first design that we're going to bling. So this is our first uh, template that we're going to bling. This is one color, right? We will do uh, the other template, which will be uh, three colors on that one, um, as I mentioned before. But this one is going to be one color. And I'm going to use crystal AB stones, and I'll show you uh, what I mean by crystal AB. Some of you, I'm sure, are very familiar with that. Uh, crystal AB is a crystal stone, but it's iridescent crystal. Okay, so here, whoops, sorry. So here is the AB and here is crystal, all right? And I like to use the highest quality, the shiniest, dazzling stones I can get my hands on. So that's what we have here in these jars, all right? So um, what we want to do or what we need prior to blinging is our tools the first tool you want to have on hand to brush your stones is this here and i've bling my my mom and my aunties have bling this out for me <laughs> this is a bling brush so to speak basically what this is is a paint edger this is a paint edger all right and this one has the styrofoam cushion handle this i enjoy using these uh, a lot when i'm doing my bling you also could use the smaller paint edger tool. This is found at Lowe's, so easy to find. This one I purchased from Walmart in the paint tools department. So this is a paint edger. You also would want to have some sort of scoop, which this is a paint scraper that I got from Lowe's. And this was, I want to say $3 and something from Lowe's. And what this will do is help me scoop up any extra stones that I'll have laying on our working mat. Now, the next um, thing that you would want to have on hand um, is something to help you pick up individual stones. And hopefully we won't have to worry about that with this one, but I'll show you how it works. Um, and there's a couple of different versions of what I'm talking about. This is a wax pen. All right, so this end... Um, you can use a different type of wax on this end, but for most part, um, people use this side when it comes to blinging and mine has been used and abused, so it looks a little bit rough, but this is wax, all right? And the wax will help you pick up individual stones and place them in the holes, all right? And you'll see why we will need that in a minute, but there's different types of that. So at Hobby Lobby, you also have this type here with the gummy tip. So this tip is super gummy, kind of like wax, but not quite, more like sticky stuff. Um, this one is dried out, thank goodness. But this one I found stuck a little bit too much to the stone, so I didn't like this as much. I do use them when I have to. Uh, here's another type that you can find. It's called a jewel picker. And this uh, you can get from Hobby Lobby and or Michaels as well. And this one also has a type of gummy tip on it as you can see there. Um, this one doesn't come off. It's not like uh, this this type. It's kind of like chewing gum, and it's not like this wax because this can be maneuvered if it warms up. You can squish it and move it around. This one is pretty much just, you know, stable, and this works pretty good. It can be a little too sticky when you first open it, but after working with it, it does work pretty decent. Then there's also the wax pencil that looks just like a, a regular uh, coloring pencil, but this is just a little more tacky, just a smidge. This can also be used to pick up individual stones, and all of these are available at Wall. Uh, I'm sorry, on Amazon as well. And this is another wax pen, all right. And this wax pen, when you see these on Amazon or uh, wish it also comes with this that looks like a pack of chewing gum well this is squares of wax okay there's wax here all right and what you generally do is peel away one of the layers to expose the wax and then you just push this up against the wax and there's a cup at the end of that and it will uh, grab some wax to stay in the tip of this pen 
okay I know how well you'll be able to see that wax but it's in there pretty good and that's also the same principle behind this end as well you can put wax this same wax on the end of this one but out of everything this pen is my favorite this is the one that I use the most when I'm blinging so I'll have this by my side and if need be you have tweezers all right so here's a pair of tweezers that you can use to pick up individual stones with as well so I don't really use the tweezers very much um, but they're there if we need them so let's get the blinging um, the first step you want to do is just pour out a semi generous amount don't go too terribly crazy with it um you can i could pour the whole jar out if i wanted to but that's a lot to have to pick up so pour out a generous amount then you grab your rhinestone brush and then you just uh brush the stones in in circles do a circular mo motion and have light pressure light firm pressure on the surface and as you see the stones will go into the holes like they're supposed to. For the most part, you shouldn't have too many issues. If it looks like a hole or two isn't getting filled in, then brush a few more stones right over the top of it and do another circular motion to uh, get those areas filled in. All right, and just brush as many stones over it as you need. Now, these the AB stones that I have, they're a little stubborn a little bit so i'm gonna have a lot more holes open than if i was to use my clear stones my clear stones brush in really easily and certain certain types of stones or brands of stones from different manufacturers you'll find that to be the case sometimes they won't cooperate as easily as other brands of stones so um You'll have to, you know, experiment and see how that works for you. So, as you see, we've brushed in, for the most part, all of the um, X, for the most part, is covered in. There's a couple of loose ones here and there that aren't in. So, at this point, I'm going to put these back on the canvas area. To help brush them in over here now if I wanted this to be a different color I could kind of put my hand in the way and finish this out and then pick these stones up and then add a different color over here and brush this separately if I wanted to I do want this particular design to be all one color um, so that's one way you can make a design that's all one color more than one color <laughs> all right that's easy and somewhat self-explanatory if you wanted to do that uh, which I have in the past I have the heart was red and then I have another one the heart is clear no actually the X and the O is clear and the heart is this color iridescent uh, crystal AB all right so we've brushed in for the most part the O there's quite a few empty spaces here and there. And so what I just do is come behind and with firm pressure, not like super hard, but, you know, steady, firm pressure, just brush to clean these loose stones off of the area and then set them off to the side because nine times out of 10, I'm going to need one or two to fill in. Now, what you want to do is go back and look because there are going to be some stones that won't be in the holes like they're supposed to be and i'm going to take this down and let you get a little bit closer so that you can see what i mean all right so um as you can see there are some areas where there's holes and then there's more than one stone in the area or the stone could be flipped over and that's where your tweezers come into play or your wax pen so like the wax pen is here there's an extra stone right here I just touch it with the wax pen it picks it up and then we move it to the next spot and put it in place there's an extra stone here well we picked up the wrong one but there's an extra stone right here put it in its right place so this is how you go back and adjust 
your um, design and making sure that everything is in place the way it's supposed to be. I personally am a little bit faster with my finger, so I'm going to take a moment and double check all of this to make sure that all the stones are in place the way they're supposed to be. So now that we have all of our stones in place, what I pretty much do is take my hand and with firm pressure, just lightly rub my hand across it to see if I can feel any stones out of place. Um, as you practice doing that, you'll be able to feel the difference when there's more than one stone on the uh, canvas or if it's upside down. And picking up stone by stone and placing your stones it's going to take practice to get the hang of that but once you do it will all flow easily so now that we have this done we're, i'm going to go ahead and clean this mess up because i don't want any stones knocked about or spilled I've already spilled enough stones today <laughs> and then put the lid back on it so that nothing happens to those and move it out of the way so now this is ready to go on my shirt. So let's grab the transfer tape. This is rhinestone transfer tape. It's shiny on one side, dull on the back. It generally comes in usually a 10 foot roll usually. And what you want to do is cut a piece that fits your template. So just as big as your template. And we're going to peel it apart. So we'll take the sticky part off of the carrier sheet. And here is our basically big piece of tape. So what I like to do is get it in a U shape and press it down and then roll it out to allow it to grab hold of the stones. All right, so what you do now is just smooth it on top and then we'll pick this up this is a brand new piece of tape though so it will pick up pretty cleanly with a brand new piece of tape and as you see it grabs those stones cleanly out of the holes all right so there are no stones left and if it was as you peel it up if you see any stones left behind just ease it back down and rub a little bit firmer there to make sure that this tape has contact with the top of the stones so let's move this out of the way because we're done with the X and O. And what you can do is one of two things. Until we get our shirt laid out, we can put this right back on our carrier paper, just like so. And you can either store this just like this for if you want to do a shirt later, or just set it off to the side until we're ready to press it. So I'm going to lay my shirt out. And again, as I mentioned, this is for me. And this is a Bella canvas tank top made out of 80% rayon, 20% polyester for those who may be curious. Um, but the content of the item really in a way doesn't matter as long as it can be pressed on a heat press. So I have been able to press to uh, Jersey knit, to uh, Jersey type material, to cotton, to you know, some of anything I've been able to press stones onto polyester 
I've been able to press quite a bit. All right, so now I have my surface flat. Let's go ahead and put our design on. And I wanna center it on this shirt right in there, roughly. Let me take a look and see. I'm a little bit anal, so that's off center just a smidge. It would look. And if you wanna be sure, you can take a ruler and one of the cheating ways I do is find the farthest edge here, measure out to the side, that's about five and a quarter, and then from this side to the farthest. So that's like four and a half, so definitely off center. That may not be 100% accurate, but it has worked for me. So you may wanna give that a shot and uh, let it work for you. Now this is the, the downside to using this thin, flimsy t-shirt material. It doesn't like to stay laying flat very well with this new tape. Uh, I generally prefer a thicker, heavier t-shirt. All right, so let's see how that works for me. That's more like five and that's more like five. So much better, much better. All right, so there's my shirt. All right, what I generally do is grab hold of it like this, take it to the heat press and lay it flat and press it. So that's what we're going to do now. So join me over at the heat press. All right, here at the heat press, 340 degrees, and I have my timer set to 12 seconds. So I am doing this one-handed, which I probably shouldn't be doing, but I am. And I'm gonna lay this out as best as I can. And straighten this out. You don't want it to have any bulk up under it, you want it to be as straight as it can possibly be so that it'll press evenly. And try not to burn yourself either. All right, sorry that took so long. And now it's ready to press. And you want to have good firm pressure on that shirt too. Rhinestones take a good bit of pressure. All right, and you want to peel this off right away. Because if you don't, you see it'll stick really good. So let me grab this off. All right, I wanted to fight me, but I got it off. So let's go take a look at our shirt. All right, so this thing tried to fight me, sir. This uh, type material held on to my transfer tape a little bit more than a regular t-shirt, but that's, you'll learn your different fabrics and what works better than others. But here's the shirt. Look at that bling on this shirt right here. Gorgeous, 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 gorgeous design. I am excited for summer so that I can wear my shirt. <laughs> so now that we have our shirt, this is shirt number one, all one color. Let's work on shirt number two and show you what it takes to layer colors, all right? All right, so now we have a small, heavy t-shirt, black, and that's what we're going to uh, apply our stones to on this one, our second design. I'm going to pre-press this just before I press the stones on. So for now, I'm gonna move this off to the side, all right? Now, as I showed you earlier in the video here, uh, are the two parts to the template, which we need the third part to the template. And here it is. We remember we put it on our Cricut mat face up 
the flock side face up and we took the white paper off of the back of it to expose the sticky so let's go ahead and take this off now and remove these two out of the way and this is how it comes off of the Cricut machine see by taking that white paper off the back and exposing the sticky it allows the holes to weed themselves you don't have to weed anything the holes stay behind and here is our template cut out all right so what we'll do is go ahead and set this off to the side and i'll show you how to get this off which is really easy i take the same paint scraper that helped me get those stones up and scrape it right across the top of this um cricket mat yes cricket has scrapers that you can use to do this as well easy peasy mac and cheesy and i make sure that my scoop is nice and clean when i'm done so that no uh residue from the sticky will grab the stones um that are left so i'm gonna hang this back up and get it out of the way and now let's take another mat so that i can go ahead and mount my template permanently to its home all right and i am going to put it here and now it is in place all right so one of two things rotary cutter or if you have a good pair of scissors you can just cut that extra part off because we don't need it and now we have all three parts to our template yay so let's go ahead and bling our first one and that's this one which is clear and this one was green and this one was gold so i need to grab those colors here in a moment but for right now we'll go ahead and bling our clear and when i do more than one color there is a way to um, layer the tape by laying the uh, templates in place and I'll show you how that works um, on the rhinestone world I don't always do my templates that way because um, I don't think it's necessary and as a matter of fact I'm not I'm not even going to show that part because you can go to the rhinestone world and see how to do that uh, if you would like I don't always cut my like with this particular pattern each one of these templates are the exact same size, but you see how all of this is wasted space, uh, wasted flock. So I'll make my template fit and not have it be the exact same size so that I don't waste flock. And that's not always, um, that's not good if you're going to try to do the other method that they do where your templates have to be the same size but i prefer not to waste blocks so i have a tendency to cut my templates down to just big enough all right so let's go ahead and wipe this off and see what we have get our stones in a safe place so that we can grab some if we need them all right and already I'm picking out the extra stones that are on here filling in the blank spaces all right so all of that is filled in all of the heart right there needs a stone so this one as you see the clear brushed in a lot 
cleaner than the uh, iridescent did. There are a lot of extra stones in this one, so we'll take our time, make sure that everything is cleared off. Okay. That's that. That's that. Make sure, yeah, I thought I saw an extra one. Extra one there. And one more extra one. Let's see. So again, I'm going to brush over it and make sure that there are, okay, that stone isn't faceted the way it's supposed to be. I also double check because these stones are manufactured, so I like to glance at all of the stones, make sure that their shimmer is where it needs to be. I don't want a dull stone on my customer's. Um, items so I do that as well and I'm going to go ahead and clean these up since we have all stones in place and we pressed the X and the O onto the tank top and then we pulled off the uh, plastic after we heat pressed so you can kind of see the indentation of the XO on there but we can use this for this project as well. So again, same process, kind of a U-ish shape and lay it down and lay it out. And make sure that all of the stones are flipped face up because sometimes when you lay the plastic on top, they'll flip over on you and then you'll go to press it and it'll press the glue to the tape instead of pressing the glue to the shirt so you want to double check that and because we've already pressed this plastic this glue uh, sheet carrier sheet i'm just rubbing extra firm to make sure that each one of these stones are picked up see how that one is still left behind so we want to go back and grab that little fella and again, that's because we've used this before. All right. There we go. So all of these are picked up now. And let's put this onto the carrier sheet. Make sure everybody's flipped the way they're supposed to be. And now we'll move the crystal out of the way and move this out of the way because we're done and let's bring these over now okay so all right now what we're going to do is pull out our green and our gold so i'm going to do green here And as you'll notice, some stones just bling easier than others. So that green went in there almost perfectly. Look at how quick, quickly we were able to get this done. All right. Take this one and put you right there. Okay. Oh, and there's a hole that didn't cut out the way it was supposed to. So we'll put a stone there. Okay. Now, the green is done. So carefully, for the time being, I'm just going to slide this off to the side until we finish pressing the crystal one. So let's clean this up. I always get my stones out of the way as I'm working. So that I can make sure I don't waste any. Okay. 
And here is the gold. I don't have much of that, so that's why it's in a little container. I normally don't use this one very often. So we're going to brush that in. Okay, we have two spots up here that need stones. There was one extra there and one extra here. Let's go there. And now we have our gold layer. So I'm gonna move this one over with that one. All right, so now let's pick up these. And we're done, basically, with the stoning part anyway. All right, so now that um, our blinging part is done, the stoning part is done, what I'm going to do is go ahead and press this shirt, pre-press it. And since you've seen the shirt being pressed before, we're not going to show that, but we'll bring it back and show you the layering uh, prior to getting pressed. So let's go ahead and pre-press this shirt all right so our first layer i generally start with the biggest bling part first all right and that helps us get everything centered when you use the largest part usually your largest part of a design is going to be in crystal because that's the least expensive stone um but of course it's based on how you uh bling your design so here we go um, I'm going to venture so far as to say that is centered. I'm going to be sure. Nope, it is off a little bit. It's off just a little bit. See how it's a little bit easier to make sure that that flattens back down. Check. And make sure it's straight. And now we will go press this part, this first part, the first layer. All right. And as I mentioned, we want to get this plastic off ASAP. because it shouldn't have stuck that much to the shirt. So had I taken the plastic off right there at the heat press, it wouldn't have stuck that hard. So look at how that looks. Isn't that gorgeous? Already. So let's go ahead and fill in the letters. At this point, it doesn't matter which section you do uh, because this is pretty even and easy to match up. So since the gold was closer, I'm gonna go ahead and pick up the gold. And this same plastic, I'm going to lay down U-shape again, flatten it. These are pretty flat stones because these aren't the super deluxe stones that are normally used. So they should pick up pretty easily because they're flatter on top, which it did. So let's move that out of the way and slide this over. And now we want to match this to our design so we're just going to layer this all right it's the bottom half of the letters is this right 
Nope, this is the top half of the letters. <laughs> Alrighty. So you want to layer that in place. And if it looks like it's off a little bit, which is the other reason why you want to um, be sure that you pull your plastic off as soon as it comes off the heat press because it can stretch your shirt. So just kind of pull the shirt in some to get that to line in place like it's supposed to be. There we go. I'm gonna look at it, make sure that's good. Make sure that's lined up. And as you see, you can manipulate the shirt, stretch it to get it to um, get your layers to line up like they're supposed to. Now, ordinarily, again, you shouldn't have to do this, but because I stretched the shirt so bad, taking the um, plastic off from the first part, it kind of throws everything off a little bit. Okay. And I do see there's a stone missing right there. So I'll add that later. Okay. All right. There we go. So let's go ahead. All right. And now that the gold is on there, that turned out that came out a little crooked on that. Sometimes if it's still hot, you can slide the stones just a little bit. I don't usually like to manipulate the stones afterwards. I like to get it right the first time, but since we're on camera trying to do this, it's acting up on me. So again, same, same sticky paper, and this is probably the last time I'm going to use this because uh, what tends to happen is um, after you use it more than a couple of times, the stones won't stick as you're trying to line things up on the shirt. Your stones will move on the sticky paper and you don't want that. Or like that just happened, it, it'll drop a stone. So let's see where that came from. It came from over here. So let's pick you back up. And now we'll line this up. And see, this time it doesn't have the same issue the other one did because I took the plastic off right away. So the shirt didn't get stretched out of place like it did that last time. So, just a little bit it did actually, but not a whole lot. Let's get you stretched down. All right. And now we'll press our last layer. And here is our completed pressed shirt. So I went back and added that other gold stone that was missing there and uh, pressed out the green and our shirt is done. So that's how you layer more than one color. Now there's more than one way to do it, but that's my way on how I layer my bling shirts. Okay. And then of course we did our um, single color shirt as well we press that so i hope you had fun blinging out shirts with me today thoroughly enjoyed our um lessons today and continue to go out there and bling it's a lot of fun very addicting and i hope to see some of the great things that you bling in your studio